name is Mr. Traeger here, and today we are celebrating you ladies. That's right, and in honor of what we're talking about today, I've got on my fancy red shirt. I got on my nice red hat. Uh, I got a nice red apple here to, to munch on. I even got my little friend Eggnog right here. Now, you might have saw him earlier. Eggnog's our elf on a shelf here. Uh, it's Christmas time here in the great state of Wisconsin, and Eggnog, he comes around December time, he checks in on the kids, and he, he kind of reports back to Santa, makes sure everything's okay, but I figured he's got a nice red hat like me, he's got a little red shirt, a little red suit like me, I thought it'd be perfect for him to help me kind of talk about this whole thing with the menstrual cycle uh, today uh, uh, for our vodcast, so let me just get a sip of cranberry juice here, oh, yeah, that was probably a little too much, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, we'll get rid of that. Okay. So here we go. I want to start off. First of all, you need to have the red worksheet, the red uh, note sheet. Now, the note sheet should be a little bit easier because you don't have to do a ton of writing on it because I got all the stuff already on it. But it's going to have all the days on it that we're going to be going through in our uh, podcast here. And you will be making some notes and some marks and stuff like that. So make sure you got that red sheet. It should have uh, the six, you know, six blocks on it, six squares, and on the back side should have a calendar. All right. So if you don't have that red sheet, push pause, go get it, come back, start the podcast up again. All right. So get the sheet if you don't have it. All right. You should have your sheet now. Uh, have it out in front of you because we're going to be writing on it a little bit, um, and uh, and then we'll uh, we'll pick it up here. All right. So. To start off with, I want to show you uh, the the side view of the female reproductive system that we've been working with, um, and uh, you know we've been going through all the parts and plumbing. So this this picture, this graphic should look pretty familiar. All right. So what I want to do is I want to show you the front view because this is what basically our notes page is going to have on there, and uh, you can see it's got um, it's got all the parts here. It's it's going to look a little bit different. So we got the uterus right here. Uh, we got the ovaries. We got the fallopian tube. We got um, the cervix right in here. So we've got all the different parts. It's just a, a front view. So it looks a little bit different than what we've been working on because this is a lot better picture to look because this is a lot better picture to look at to actually take a look at what's happening inside the female reproductive system. All right. Starting off with days one through four, it's important to understand that the average menstrual cycle runs 28 days. All right. Now that's average. That means that some girls are going to have a menstrual cycle that's shorter. Some girls are going to have a menstrual cycle that goes longer. Um, it's not uncommon for teenage girls to have differences in, in each month. Um, you know, one month will be 28 days, the next month will be 26, the next month it might be 31. You know, that's not necessarily uncommon because with all the hormones and changes that are going on in the body, um, you know, those kinds of things can happen. But on average, it's 28 days, and we're going to go off of a 28-day cycle to explain what's happening in the menstrual cycle. All right? Days one through four, what we see going on is menstrual flow is happening. All right? Day one is very easy to figure out, all right, because day one is the first day that a girl starts her period, all right. It's very obvious when day one starts. You can mark that on a calendar, put a little dot there, circle it, smiley face, frowny face, whatever it is you want to put on a calendar. That signifies day one. It doesn't matter if the 15th of the month or the 20th of the month, that is day one, all right. Um, and then that's what we basically count off from um, when we're charting the menstrual cycle, all right. So two things are happening in days one through four for the most part. We have active menstruation going on. You can see right there, menstrual flow is leaving the uterus. Okay, the uterine wall is breaking down, the menstrual blood is flowing. Okay, and then we also have an egg cell maturing. Okay, if we look right there, we can see uh, this, this egg cell is bigger than the rest of them. And like we said before, a girl is born with all the, the egg cells that she's going to have, these what are called follicles. All right, and these follicles will mature into one single uh, egg cell. All right. So as the, the the female is menstruating, she is in fact building basically a new egg cell. All right. It's getting ready to be released. All right. So then we move to days five through twelve. And we got our first hormone. All right. Right here. First hormone, estrogen. All right. Uh, we talked about how in the ovaries um, we've got two hormones that are being secreted: estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen is the first one that we're going to talk about. Now, estrogen, I want you to go ahead and circle it. I think it's underlined in your notes. But circle estrogen because it's an important thing for you to know. What it does, it's got two jobs. The first one, go ahead and underline it just like I am. 
the lining of the uterus grows because of estrogen. As estrogen levels rise, the uterine lining gets thicker and thicker. Now, if we look at our picture right here, if you'll see right there, the uterine wall is, is getting thicker. All right. We notice there's no menstrual blood happening at this point. Uh, menstrual period is over. Um, and so now what's happening is, is that, that estrogen is rising, the urine wall is thickening, and the second job is, is that the ova now it, uh, starts to, to develop or mature. Now, ova also is another word for the egg cell, all right? If you want to write the word egg cell next to ova so you know what it means, uh, that's fine, but it simply is the egg cell. It's another word for it, all right? So estrogen has basically two jobs, all right? The first job is the egg cell. The second job is the endometrium. It grows those two things, all right? You can kind of think of it as like a fertilizer, all right? It makes things grow. The egg cell and, and the endometrium, they both start with E. Estrogen starts with E. Uh, should be an easy thing for us to remember, all right? So estrogen, egg cell, endometrium. Look at that. It's like an E right there, all right? So estrogen causes that uterine wall to thicken. Uh, it's pumping through the bloodstream. Um, and it's going to continue to grow as we go through the cycle. We get to days 13 to day 14, somewhere in that ballpark. Now, day 14 is an important number to, to remember when we're talking about uh, the average of a 28-day cycle. And what do you think is the reason why number 14 is a unique day in a 28-day cycle? That's right. If you divide this in half, you get 14. All right? So... Day 14 is exactly halfway through the cycle, all right? Now, what's happening on day 14 or happening right in the middle of the cycle is ovulation. Go ahead and underline this word. Ovulation occurs. Now, what is ovulation? Ovulation is when this egg cell is released into the fallopian tube. So we see I've got a graphic here of the egg cell right here inside the fallopian tube, all right? So that's what ovulation is. Now, if we look here, endometrium still growing, no menstrual blood present. We're right in the middle of the cycle, that's when the egg cell is released. All right? Now, the other thing to remember is the egg cell has only 24 hours to be fertilized. That's it, 24 hours. So it's got to make it from here to here, and somewhere in here is going to get fertilized. All right? It's usually going to take longer than 24 hours to get to the uterus, which is why most of the fertilization takes place here in the fallopian tubes. All right? But uh, but that's what has to happen. Sperm cells will survive about 48 hours, so that's where we get our range of about four days, roughly, where a woman is is what would be considered the most fertile. Ideally, if sperm cells are waiting uh, in the fallopian tube here, when the egg cell is released, that's the optimum conditions for fertilization to take place. All right. But halfway through a woman's cycle, doesn't matter if it's 28 days or 30 days or whatever, it's going to be right in the middle. So 30 days would be day 14. Uh, you know, 32 days would be day 16. Um, 24 days would be day 12. You know, right in the middle of the cycle is when ovulation takes place. All right. Now, once ovulation takes place, now the follicle that released the egg cell, you can see right here, the follicle that released that egg cell secretes a new hormone called progesterone. The progesterone is our second hormone that is released by the ovary. All right. And what progesterone does, it's got a pretty important job, is what progesterone does is it prevents any production of a new egg cell. All right? It basically puts the brakes on everything. It puts the female reproductive system in a holding pattern. All right? um, I kind of equate it to like a football game when you're kicking the winning field goal, and as soon as the kicker kicks the ball and that ball's traveling through the air and everybody's watching it as it goes through the air, that's kind of what's happening right now. The, the body's kind of waiting to see is fertilization going to take place or not? So really, nothing major happens during this next, you know, roughly week, all right? Um, and, and during this time, progesterone is being released by this, what's called the corpus luteum, this, uh, this little follicle, all right? Secretes progesterone, all right? So the, as the egg cell is still traveling down the fallopian tube, we're waiting to see if, pregnancy, or if fertilization is going to take place. Now, days 21 through 28, we can see that the uterine lining is starting to shed from the uterus, all right? Uh, we got the egg cell right here, so that tells us that the egg cell did not get fertilized. Uh, there's usually a, a chemical reaction that happens that tells the brain that fertilization didn't take place. The brain sends a message to the uterus that we gotta get rid of the, the endometrium, we gotta get rid of the egg cell because we wanna grow a brand new one for the next egg cell that's being created, all right? If we look over here, we see that 
that follicle is closing up. Well, what happens then is the progesterone levels go away. So as progesterone levels go away, that stimulates the menstrual cycle to kick in again. All right, estrogen levels are going to drop, uh, progesterone levels are going to drop, the uh, endometrium is going to shed from the uterine lining, and then the whole thing is going to repeat itself again. All right. So right now we would have the lovely thing, ladies, that we call cramps. All right, and uh, and this is where the, the uterus is contracting and it's trying to get rid of all that menstrual menstrual fluid, menstrual blood. Then we start day one again. All right, so that's the basic gist of what's happening with the hormones and what's happening within the menstrual cycle. All right, now let's take a look at what happens if fertilization takes place. Now you don't have a graphic of this. I'm just going to show you this real quick. But what what changes is. And what we have here is all these are showing different timelines, all right? So this is probably like within within eight hours, and this is within, let's say, 12 hours, and this is within, let's say, you know, 24 hours, and this is, you know, what's happening is, is the egg cell splitting. But we see here we have fertilization takes place. We see that little sperm cells in there and fertilizes the egg, all right? And now we see the egg splitting, and we see these multiple uh, changes that are happening within the egg cell. And what's going on is as it goes through the fallopian tube, we can see all these changes that are happening as it travels down that fallopian tube until eventually it implants itself in the uterine wall. And then from this point is where the umbilical cord is going to grow and literally the baby is going to grow. So our next graphic here is going to show uh, a developing fetus and we can see some of these different structures. And I want to show you this because it's going to be important when we get into some of these other things like with, especially with AIDS, because a lot of people think that if mom has uh, HIV because that's a bloodborne disease the baby automatically gets it but it's not true because if you'll notice the baby's bloodstream right here and this is the umbilical cord here and this is all the the um, blood vessels that are hooked into what's called the placenta alright that's what basically is, is nourishing the baby we see the placenta then is um, connected to the uterine wall which is right here okay here's mom's blood vessels right here uh, there's a vein and an artery right here but notice that Mom's, mom's arteries do not touch or come in contact with the baby's arteries, all right? So what happens is all the nutrients from mom's blood simply diffuse over. The nutrients do, all right? The blood doesn't actually travel over there. The nutrients, oxygen, all that kind of stuff transfers right over. And then the waste products from the baby, carbon dioxide and all that stuff, basically diffuse out into mom's veins, okay? So mom and baby's blood never mix. And that would make sense because baby could have a different blood type than mom. So let's say baby's blood type is type B because some of the genetics that baby's getting is from dad. And let's say mom's blood type is A. Well, if mom has type A blood and baby has type B blood and their blood mixes together, we've got a real problem. All right. So mom and baby's blood type can be different, but their, bl their blood never mixes. So if mom has some kind of a bloodborne pathogen, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to travel from the mom to the baby. It could in some cases, but a lot of times it doesn't because you got to have blood to blood contact. So I just kind of wanted to point that out because that's going to come into play uh, down the line when we talk about some of the diseases and stuff like that. All right, so let's talk about the hormones, all right? And I'm going to show you this graphic here that kind of demonstrates what's happening with estrogen and progesterone, all right? How these two chemicals work together, all right? So estrogen rises, it plateaus and falls, all right? Just like that. Now, when we have, basically, uh, we're going to put roughly day, um, I'd say I'd say we're going to have, let's start over here. We're going to have day one, so girl's menstrual period is going to start right about here, okay? This is going to be roughly day five, okay, when menstruation ends, okay? And then as, as estrogen levels rise, okay, we're going to have day 14 right here, all right? Now, again, we're talking about a 28-day cycle. So when we have day 14 up here, and then we got roughly day 20 here, okay, this is when ovulation takes place, okay? Now, remember what hormone shows up when ovulation takes place, when we release that egg cell? Progesterone, all right? So we'll see on day 14, progesterone shows up because that's when the egg was released, okay? Now, what we see from here to here is that waiting period. We're waiting to see is fertilization going to take place or not? And we can tell that fertilization did not take place because we see progesterone levels crash and we see estrogen levels crash. All right. And so then that puts the menstrual period. Here's day, here's day one. This would be day 28. Okay. And then here we got day five. 
we got day 14, we got day 20, we got day 28, and we've got day 1, day 5. You see how this, this cycle continues? So we got 5 here, 14, 20, all right? And then the cycle just keeps continuing and continuing, all right? And that's basically the rise and fall of these hormones. Now, right here, right here, we have this weird condition. Now, ladies, you kind of know what I'm talking about. It's this condition called PMS. Do, 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 do. All right? Now, why do we have this condition PMS? What is it? Some girls are kind of crabby. Some are emotional. Some cry easy. Some are quiet. Uh, some, you know, just uh, want to be left alone. Uh, it, some, some girls struggle with it. Some girls don't. It just depends. The problem is, is that you've got two hormones that are are at a high level right here and then in a very short period of time we see this this big crash head downward all right we see we got these two hormones that are high and all of a sudden they crash down low and that hormone shift creates some some problems in terms of our mood and emotions all right and then that leads into you know we got cramping and all that kind of stuff which I'm sure is no picnic um, but uh, that's what's really happening with PMS all right, it's the shift in hormones, and that has an effect on our personality, has an effect on our mood, our emotions, all that kind of stuff. So that's what comes in, which, by the way, PMS stands for pre, which means before, menstrual syndrome, PMS, all right, if you didn't know that. Um, why is it called PMS? Well, my college disease was taken. <laughs> I'm saying that here because I'm on the camera. I'm not in front of you guys, so otherwise you'd be throwing stuff at me. Now, I want to show you what the difference is um, when we have fertilization take place so a girl gets pregnant, okay? So how the hormones are going to look. We have estrogen rising and progesterone is released, and we see a huge difference in what happens with estrogen and progesterone, all right? So here we got down here, like we had before, we have day 5. We got day 14, so ovulation takes place. But now fertilization happened, all right, and so progesterone never goes away. Estrogen levels never drop. Why is that? Because we need to keep the endometrium there. We don't want to get rid of it, okay? Now, the other thing is, is that progesterone sticks around because we do not want another egg cell. Why? Because the egg cell we have has already been fertilized, so we don't need a new one. Um, and so everything is, has come together the way it was designed to. Fertilization took place. We're going to take care of this, this egg cell, this developing fetus, uh, until it's born 10 months later. All right. So progesterone is going to stick around so that no more egg cells are released. Um, estrogen levels are going to stay around so that the endometrium stays in place, develops the uh, placenta so that the baby has something that it get nour gets nourishment from. All right, so we see a very big difference between the, um, the menstrual cycle up and down versus what the menstrual cycle looks like once fertilization takes place. It's a big difference. All right? Now, we're going to flip our uh, page over and we're going to go to the calendar section because right? we're going to take a look at how to chart uh, the menstrual cycle. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to look at, we're going to say that this is the month of February. I don't have a whole lot of room up here. Here's February. And here's March. All right, we're going to make it real easy. Okay, we're still working on a 28-day cycle. February um, uh, has 28 days in it. Okay, so let's just make life easy and say that um, that a uh, girl starts her period. She has a 28-day cycle. She starts her period on day one of February 1st. Okay, so she has her period day February 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. Maybe the fifth. It's usually four, five, six days trails off. Okay. So now, what day is she going to ovulate? Okay, it's a 28-day cycle. It's halfway through the cycles when she ovulates. So that means that day 14 is when ovulation is going to take place. Okay, this is when she's released the egg cell. Okay. So if that egg cell doesn't get fertilized, when is she going to start her next period? Okay. It's not going to be day. It's not going to be February 28th. That's the last day of the cycle. Her first, her next menstrual period is going to be on the 1st of March, all right? This is day 28. This is day one. It's a brand new cycle. Kind of put a put a, um, a line right there, okay? And that's the mistake a lot of people make is they say, oh, 28-day cycle, she starts her period on the 28th day. 
No, that's not it. What you want to do is you got to count from first menstrual period, day one, to second menstrual period, and then you subtract one day. And that's how we get what our cycle is, 28 days. All right? So that's how this works. All right? So in terms of fertilization, when are her fertile days? Well, if she ovulates on this day, she's got 24 hours. So the 14th is a fertile day. The 15th is a fertile day. All right, so those are probably two of the most prime times for her to get pregnant. But sperm cells survive for 24 hours or for 48 hours. So any time from here all the way to here is when she runs the chance of getting pregnant. Probably right here to right here being the best chances. Okay, and so uh, like when we start talking about natural family planning, for example, where we're charting the menstrual cycle. And then we're trying not to have sex during fertile days so that we don't get pregnant. Or if we're trying to get pregnant, these would be the optimum days right here to make sure that we're sexually active so that we can get pregnant for, for you know, couples that are trying to have a baby. All right. So this is why it's important to understand this menstrual cycle because a lot of people think, oh, well, right here is when the egg cell, you know, right here is where I can get pregnant. Not true. Some people are saying, oh, it's right when I, you know, before I get cramps, that's when I can get pregnant. No, it's right in the middle, literally. It's right in the middle. Um, that's when a female's hormones are the highest. That's when everything is primed and ready to be fertilized. Which, by the way, because we have day 14, let me get rid of my pen marks here. Because day 14 is her most fer fertile day where her hormones are the highest, that's when she's the most interested in being sexually active. All right? So, little piece of advice for you guys out there when a girl wants to play, you should run away. Otherwise, you might have a baby someday. <laughs> All right. So that's when her hormone levels are the highest. That's when she's the most interested. And it makes sense because that's when she is most likely to get pregnant. That's how her biology is set up. All right. And so that's that's something to pay attention to uh, in terms of, of hormonal stuff. All right. OK. Now we're going to I'm going to quiz you a little bit. I'm going to throw some some trick uh, trick math at you. OK. Let's say we've got a 28 day cycle. OK. But let's change the day that that um, menstruation starts. So let's say that that she starts her period on the 10th of February. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to circle the 10th of February on your sheet. OK. And she has a 28 day cycle. I'll write that up here. 28 day cycle. OK. And I want you to tell me uh, right on your sheet. I want you to to mark off when she's going to get her next period and when she ovulated. All right. So go ahead and work that on your chart. Once you're done, or push pause, work it on your chart. Once you're done, hit play again, and then we'll go through the answers, all right? All right, so what would you come up with? All right, well, the next date for her period would be the 10th of March, all right? And it's real simple. All you got to do, we have 28 days. This is day one, right? Day two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. There's day 28, so that means day one is right here where she starts her new cycle. Now, how many of you said she was going to start a period on the 9th? Yeah, some of you did. I know you did. Uh, because, again, we run into that problem of saying, oh, 28 days, that means she starts her period on the 28th day. No. She's, the 28th day is the last day of the cycle. She starts her menstrual period the day after. All right, that's going to be important to understand. So, 28 days, when did she ovulate? She ovulated on the 14th day. So, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's going to put it at what, day 23? Or I'm sorry, the 23rd of February, right here. This is when she ovulated. All right, so check your chart. Make sure that you got those dates right. All right, day one was here. This is halfway. This was day 14, and then we have day one down here. All right. See how the days of the of the the dates on the calendar can get you all confused. All right. I'm gonna try another one. See how you do. All right. Let's change it up, and we're gonna go 26 days. All right. And she's gonna start her period on the 18th of February. All right. So again. When is she going to have her next period if she has a 26-day cycle? And when is she going to ovulate? All right? Push pause. or Don't push pause yet. Figure it out. <laughs> push pause and figure it out. Okay. 
So what'd you come up with? All right, you should have the 16th of March would be her next period for a 26 day cycle. All right, so we go back day one, two, three, four, and if we count it all the way through, this should be day 26. All right, so right here is day one, two, three. All right, did you, uh, you should have got this one right. All right, remember you get to count 26 days. And then it's the next day, the day after, is when her first menstrual period would, would show up. So now when did she ovulate? She would have ovulated uh, on the 15th. Where's that at? Nope, sorry, got that wrong. She would have ovulated on the 1st, right here. This would have been ovulation. Because that's right in the middle. This would be day 15. I'm sorry, be day 12. Day 12, because she has a 26-day cycle. All right, so day 12 is right there. All right, one more. We gotta get this right. Let's do a twenty let's do a thirty-one day cycle. Thirty-one. Let's see how you do on this one. And she starts her period, let's say the ninth. Let's do that. The ninth. Alright. The ninth of February, she starts her period. She has a thirty-one day cycle. When's her next period? And uh when did she ovulate? Alright? Push pause, figure it out, and then uh, start it up again. All right. Uh, you should have come up with, let's see, the 12th. Here's when she should have started her next period. All right. Again, we count 31 days. This is day one. This is day 31. There's day one, day two, day three. So right here is when she would have had her period, day 12. All right. When would she have ovulated? She would have ovulated somewhere between... 23rd and the 24th because we got 31 it's an odd day so it's going to be somewhere between day 15 and day 16 we have day 15 here and we have day 16 here so it's somewhere in between um, and that's where she's going to uh, be the most fertile in terms of ovulation all right but we got to count day one goes all the way to 31 and then it's the next day is when menstrual period starts all right so now one more little trick question for you can a girl have a period, have her period twice in one month? Because there's a lot, and most of the time this is true, that women will have their period once a month. But is it possible for her to have it more than once in one month? The answer is yes. All right, so we're going to work this one out. Let's say she's got a 24 day cycle. All right, and let's say that she, or I'm sorry, she has her first period on the 3rd of February. All right. When is she going to get her next period? All right. So figure that one out and then start play or hit play again. All right. You should have circled her next period would be on the 27th of February. All right. Because it's 24 days. There's 28 days in February. This is day one. This is day 24. Here's day one, day two, day three. So if she's got a short cycle, it's very possible that she's going to have her menstrual period twice in the same month. All right. So um, if you're still stuck on this, run through this part of the video again and try to get these numbers down because that's going to be important for, for you guys to understand. And with this whole thing right here, because I know a lot of you guys are saying, why do I got to remember all this? Because we got this PMS thing right here, and this could save your life someday to understand how this goes. All right. So. Um, so make sure you understand this, uh, this whole process here, and, and for you ladies who have maybe never charted your menstrual cycle before, this is an example of how you can chart it, because doctors are kind of interested in this kind of stuff when you go in and get a checkup and all that exciting stuff, all right? Um, so um, that's all I got for you today. Uh, me and Eggnog, we're happy to help you out with that, um, and uh, I think that's all I got, all right? So uh, make sure you log into Kia, get your quiz taken care of, um, and... I think that's it. All right. I'm just going to get back to my uh, cranberry juice. My apple. And I am out of here.